So now we are going to begin the AR setup. AR setup we are going to begin. So we have two such ones now. Fine. One for the return 97392 and then one for the order 97. They are all being interfaced to uh, awaiting billing now. Fine. They have gone to the awaiting billing. They have gone to the awaiting billing. So now uh, we have to close the sales order. The activity is what? Every CSR, the customer service representative who acts as an interface between the implementing company, let us say Reliance Industries, and then the customer as let us say Air India. So between these two, whatever the CSR is acting as an interface, and then his job is to close every sales order line and then every sales order header actually. So he has to close both now. Right? And then, in fact, in the meetings, evening meetings, he will be having a meeting with the uh, top management that how many lines he has closed today, and then how many orders he has closed today, and then how many are pending now. Fine. Some of them, what happens? Uh, there is no, there is a problem in the shipping area. The power is not there, water is not there, compressed air is not there, manpower is not there. So he will uh, raise, and then the inventory in charge will not tell all the problems about why they are not shipped. In. In some other cases, what happens, uh, uh, the manufacturing may not be taking place. It is a make and buy, make and ship actually. So we have to make and ship. So manufacturing may not take place. In some other cases, we have to buy and then ship. Right? Or in some other cases, we have to transfer and ship. So all these problems will be discussed in the meeting with the, what happens with the sales, CSRs. All the CSRs will be attending a top meeting of the vice president actually. And then uh, they will now communicate the problems and every section will now tell you why they were unable to fulfill the needs of the customers actually. Fine. So that way it works actually. So uh, you have to what I was doing now. Now we are going to close the sales orders now. You know, go to this place. So now we are done it now. Fine. So we are now completed all these things. Fine. Fine. Returnable. Return. 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 Order. Fine. So uh, the, uh, the it will now give you a problem that the receiving parameter is not done. Fine. Line struck on this thing. And then I have already done it because of it is not done. Fine. So go there. Send receipt confirmation. We are running it now. Fine. Now what happens? Uh, uh, advance. Uh, uh, now. The fifth sixth step onwards, the AR. So, the first activity is what we have to add the IVO to the manage receivable system office. Now, go there. So, let us now add the IVO to the manage receivable. This is the first activity in AR. Belong to the first activity in this movie. So, click on another point. I'm going to do it now. So, I'll go there. Click on it. Go to the setup and maintenance, and then we'll not do the first activity in AR. Click on it. Go there. So click on search. It is manage receivable system options. Manage receivable system And then we have to query our BU. We have to query our BU. So here we have a problem actually. Fine. If you go and then query your BU, find T02. If you make a search, it was not coming at all. There was a bug actually. And then the bug, when we raised SR, they asked me to what happens? You go to the drop down, drop down, and then make a search. Now fine, click on search. It will not come at all. Go and then click on search, it will not come at all. So Oracle asked us to go to the search in the advanced and then do it. Fine. The bug is still existing. I don't know why they are not correcting the bug. It's not coming. So go there. So you drop down. You drop down and then on the search it is not coming. So Oracle suggested us to go to advanced. If I click on the advanced it will come down. If they have identified the bug they should have corrected it. Now I don't know why they are not corrected it. And if you make a search it will not come here. If you make a search now fine. It, it now starts with. Starts with. And then go there, click on search now. Right. Now it will come. This bug they are not even addressed till now. The normal one it is not coming at all. I don't know why they are not still keeping the bug as such. Starts with an no coming. Fine. Click on the magnifier icon and then I go to query my receivable system options. While we are running the rapid implementation, the system has automatically created everything except the IVO because at the time inventory orgs were not existing. So go there, click on it, click on update. Now. We have to update the what happens the receivable system options with our IVO. So we had to update the IVO. That is what there is now. Right? So manage receivable system. When add IVO in the manage receivable system options, then the fifth to sixth step is the first step in AR. So go down. So here, item validation organization, add it. You add your master all. The remaining the system has automatically populated everything. But this was not created during rapid implementation. <coughs> during the rapid implementation, it was not created. <coughs> so we had to add it now. <coughs> and then only you had to bring it to the interface inter from the interface table to the base tables of AR you have to bring it now. So the first activity you do it. So click on save and close. Now we have added IVO in the managed receivable system options. Now you run it now. So afterwards what happens you do that and open the GL period and then the receivable period. This period has to be open. Open GL period and the receivable period. You will now open the GL and then the AR period has to be open. Thank you. You will now open the e GL and AR. So I will now go to the general general accounting and then go to the period close. 
and then we had to open the GL as well as the AR now because there's no AR activity. Open the GL and AR period. Go to the period close and then let us now open it up. So go there. General ledger period never opened now, right? And then the receivables also never opened, right? Never opened up. Right? You cannot see the ledger because we have already given the data access now. Right? For the data access, we have already given. So if this ledger is not coming, again go on and make a check on the data data access actually. So 13th December is the one final that click on general ledger and then open the period. Go to general ledger and then we'll open the period. So the first period is Jan 19. That is what is there. Fine, click on okay now. So click on it. That will become the first period. Before which you cannot open any other period. Before Jan 19, we cannot open anything. Click on refresh by which what happens? You are now refreshing it now. So click on refresh now. So once the period is open, it will show you the bottom. The concurrent is now submitted. So it's working, working, working. You can see the Jan 19 is open now, and then Feb 19 is in the future period. It's future interval. This is the open period now. So let us now open the target period straight away. So we will now select it and then go to actions and then open the target period. Target period. So go there. And then here, drop it down. And then here we have periods only up to what happens uh, December 30 only. Fine. I will now open up 19, November 19, I will now open up one. We have to create the periods also. Fine. 2021, you have to create. Fine. The action will now open up all, all the periods to this page. Up to November, it is now going to open now. Now we have to open the what's called, we have to create the periods actually. We have to create the periods. So you can now see up to October 19, up to November, uh, up to October, uh, we give it refresh now. Fine. We have given up to November. No? Fine. Okay. Up to something. Okay. November is open. December is not open. November 20. So we have to create the periods. Now. Periods itself is not there. Fine. Now go and then create the periods. Right. We have to create the periods actually. Go to the setup and maintenance and then let us now create the periods actually. Setup and maintenance. Then go there. Click on it. Click on search. <clears throat> go there. So manage. Fine. Accounting uh, calendars. So manage accounting calendar the one. Manage accounting calendar the one. We'll now query our calendar and then we'll now open the periods. So T02 is the one. T02. Fine. Enter it now. Select it and then what happens? Edit it. We'll now add the periods. Adding period is very easy when compared to GL. Fine. In the EBIS. EBIS is very difficult. Here what happens? You simply go and then click on add here now. So Jan 20 up to what happens? December 20 is ready. So click on add year, it will automatically add a year. Beautiful. In the GL, we have to do line by line, we have to add. So one add year is okay, fine. Go click on it. January 21 up to December 21, including the adjust period, adjusting period is now created. There's adjusting period in the bottom right. So, created. so click on seven close now, it's not done. So sometimes what happens, you have to log out and log in now, fine. We'll not see whether it is appearing or not. Otherwise, we have to log out. Now. So save and close. Now one year is added. And then up to December 21 is now added now. We'll go there and then try to open the period now. <clears throat> so go to this period and go to the called. I will now go there. I will now go to what? Go to actions and then go to open target period. Whether we will now see up to number is now coming on. Go there. So it's now coming. Okay. Fine. Otherwise, we have to log out and log in November. So I will now open up to November also. Fine. November 21, I'm opening it up. So click on open now, fine. It will now open the target period of now. It will now say, okay, fine. Everything will be done. This is not possible in costing. You have seen it now, fine. Costing, we have to open one by one, remember. Whereas here, we can even open for a target period straight away. So the GL has to be opened and then AR has to be opened. So you can now see, November 21 is also open. Now we will go there, click on now, and now see the latest period. So October 21 is the one, fine, it will open. So receivable is not open, fine, click on the receivables and then it does not open the period. Receivable is never open, fine, click on it, it will now open up the receivables period. So drop it down. The first period is again January 19, fine. January 19 is the first period. Open only is January 18. Anything before only is not possible, that is what I saying. Before January 19, you cannot open, that is the warning. Okay. So click on it now. So the request is submitted and then if you refresh it, what happens, it will be going on doing it. So January is open now. Fine. I will now go there. Go to actions and then go to open target period. I will now open up to November 21 straight away. I will now open up to November 21. November 21, I am opening it up. Thank you. 
So after opening the periods, you will be in a position to run the import auto invoice. So both the uh, sales orders, one is the sales order and then one is the return order is now gone to awaiting billing. So what it has done is it has now pushed into the interface tables of AR. Now we have to bring it into the base tables of AR. We have to bring it to the base tables of AR. So up to normal 21 is no open point. Everything is not done. I click on the point. <coughs> now having opened the periods, we will now go there. Click on it. We will now go and then run this. So, no, no. so import order invoice. I'm going to I now open the GL and receivable period. I'm going to import the order invoice. We will now stop at 68 actually. 68. I will now stop. So we will now go there. Import order invoice. Got us. I will now run the import order invoice. I'll go there. Click on it. So once when it is imported, the line gets closed actually. If you go to the tools and then go to the schedule process. So it is the CSR's responsibility to close every line and then every order also. So click on schedule new process. No, go there. Paste it over here, man. You are done. Import order invoice. Import order invoice is the one. Import order invoice, man. Click on okay. So click on okay. So the business unit is T02. And give a tap now. The business unit is T02. But the, the transaction source is what not contract internal and drop it down and then change it to what your distributed order orchestration. So distributed order orchestration. And now go down. So I have a sales order uh, ranging in different numbers now. Fine. I will now put both the numbers over here. So 97381. Fine. 97381. And then I will now say up to what? Up to 97392. In between, what happens? It has not got interface to air at all. It has not gone to the interface tables. So, this and this are only done. 97392. 97392. So, whatever has been interfaced, they will all be converted as a AR invoice. One is a normal invoice, and then one is a what? RMA invoice. There is a uh, debit, there is a credit memo. Fine. It is a credit memo. So, one credit memo, and then one normal invoice will be getting created. So, from this says order, this says order, I am going to pull it. From the interface tables into the base tables now, fine. So it has already gone to awaiting billing. Awaiting billing means what? It has already pushed into the interface tables of AR. Now I am now pulling into the base tables of AR by running the import order invoice for this range of sales orders. So click on submit now, fine, by which it will now start to pull. So it is getting submitted. So it is now running, fine. It will also generate a report also. It will also be generating a report now. So once when the report is generated, import order invoice. Import order invoice. So it is not generated report also. So once when the import is complete, you can now see on the sales order. That what happens? The line will be closed. Actually, <coughs> the line was having an awaiting billing now. And then go there. Then we'll have a look at the sales order. <coughs> it will be getting closed. So go to the order management and then go to the sales order. Now, go to the order management. It will not query the okay, nine seven three eight one. Will not query now. Fine. Nine seven three eight one. Click on search here. You go to search it. The line gets closed. <coughs> the awaiting billing thing is about operation. So it's all running. This place is all running. <coughs> So go to the monitor process and how it will still running. So once when the auto import order invoice completes, you can now see that the line status will now get closed. The import order invoice is now completed. So go there. So it will now notify the feeder system. Now. The, the feeder system is the uh, OM now. Fine. AR is now going to notify. So once when this completes, you can now see this line status is closed. Now. The line status will be closed upon notification actually. See, it is now built. The status is now coming as built, and then it will now go to closed actually. Right? Now it is now built. Right? It will now go to closed actually. It is now closed. Right? This is now closed. Similarly, let us now query the other one. Now find another part. No query the other one. So do that. It is what? 97392. 97392. Click on search. Click on search. Here also, the return also will be closed. Right? The return order is also closed. Now the monitor process will be giving an output. Can anyone see that? Uh, what happens? Invoice, order invoice, execution report also we can see. You go to the order invoice execution report. Then how is that? Go to the order invoice. Click on it. 
Any report can be published actually. If I click on the publish and then it will be published. I republish, I am going to do it now. So click on it. Go to export and then go to PDF. So we now see this something. Click on it. Show all. I will now open it up and then see this. So it is now saying number of selected is four and then successfully created this process is four. So it is only two, but actually along with the taxes, I think, along with the taxes, it will be coming. So credit memo is one now. And then there are two lines, and then invoice is one. There are two lines, totally four lines. Actually. So the credit limo is only for one quantity is nine minus nine dollars. This is for shipment ninety dollars. So total we owe eighty one dollars. We owe to the customer actually. Rather customer owes us. Customer owes us eighty one dollars. What is? Is the end of the report. And this may be for the taxes. I think and one more line maybe for the taxes. So order invoice execution validation reports. So the customer owes us ninety dollars because he has written one quantity order which whatever ninety minus uh, ninety minus nine is eighty one five dollars. Now this can be seen on our AR also. Man, go that one down. Now go to the AR and then how we look at it. So this we have seen in the So let us then keep it as it is. Now go there. Right click and then duplicate. Duplicate it. No, remove up to com. No, up to com you remove it and then see no. Now go to the AR and then see this. So go to the receivables, go to the receivables, and then go to that what's called uh, billing. Fine. Receivables billing, we are going to have a look at it. Receivables billing, and then we'll now go to the managed transaction section. So receivables billing, I'm going over there, and then let us now look at the managed transactions. You go to the managed transactions, and then have a look at it now. Receivables billing. And then you go to it. Bill to customer is what? T02. And then you have a tab now. So, on which we can even references our sales orders now. Fine. Without a sales order reference, I am giving it now. So, out of all the stars, double star, one is the mandatory. Fine. Click on search now. So, it will not show me the, both the invoice as well as the credit memo. Fine. The invoice and credit memo. So, this is an invoice for $90 and the credit memo for minus $9. You know, we are going to process this also. Fine. But up to uh, GL actually. Fine. We will process it. So click on the fine. Now, what this guy will do is he will now run the update now. So this program is normally scheduled actually. It's called update fine. percentage. Close percentage. He is now going to run it. Now you can see on the order, line is closed. When all the lines are closed, they will now run this concurrent. And then this concurrent is now going to what? Update the header. The header will be closed from this. This will be running on a frequent basis. Every 10 minutes or 15 minutes, it will be running automatically. Update or close sales orders, we are running it now. And then here, make the interval as what? Zero. Fine. Zero means immediate. And then the entity is what? Header. It is capital H, remember. Entity is capital H. And then click on submit. Now. And this is now going to close all the headers where lines are closed. It will be what happens? They're closing all the headers where lines are closed. Actually. So it will now be closing all the lines. So update or close sales orders more running. So it is the responsibility of the CSR to close all the lines and all the headers and report to the management actually. So once they are closed, his job is over and then the receivables, the revenue recognition team will now come into picture and then they will be basically doing what the management orders. And then if you give a refresh, you can all see the headers closed. So you can see headers closed. So 97392 is closed. No fine. The return is not fine. Click on the no, go and then query the original one. So 9739, Nine seven three eight one is the one and one search here also the header would have been closed. Header is closed. So the CSR's activity is now complete. If there are 10 lines, only after you close all the lines, the header can be closed. The update will not work at all. If even one line is not closed, it will not work. So he is responsible for closing lines and headers. That means what? He has communicated with the sales order, he has booked the sales order with the customer, and then he has shipped it, and then he has done the billing also. The billing is also complete. Now, it is for the AR team to do the revenue recognition. The revenue recognition will be done by the AR and that is going to follow after a break. So, we are going to do the revenue recognition with the AR now. So, what is my now? stop now? I have a 15 minutes break now. We will now come back and then we will now do the revenue recognition. Now, we are continuing with the AR setups now. Thank you. We are continuing with the AR setups. Go to this place. So, we have now done the import order invoice and then we have now done the update close and sales orders. So, everything has got closed. Now, we are going to go and then create our bank. Right? The last topic of the day is only 68 actually. And 68 is the last topic of the day. So, let us now go there and then go to the manage banks and then create a bank. 
manage banks and then you're going to get a bank. Good place. No good place. So we'll now go and then create our bank. Go to the setup and maintenance and then we'll now create a bank. So click on it and then go to the search. Go to the manage banks. So go to the manage banks. So click on create and I'm going to get a bank. <coughs> Always put your prefixes everywhere now. Right? So make the country as United States. So United States is the one. So United States went to the United The bank name, I don't know, say T02 and uh, HSBC. HSBC Bank. Always put your this in the bank, bank code. Uh, I will not put T02. Uh, one, two, three. So, description taxpayer defined all these things are not required. So, expand the address and then we'll locate the address for this. Expand the address and then go and click on plus one and we're going to get the bank's address actually. So, go there. Address line. So, now say T0 fine. Address line one and then put the postal code here. 0020. So the bigger one I'm choosing it fine. City, state, county, everything is now populated. If I click on OK, fine. By which the address is now completed. That is it. Click on the contacts. I will now say on the bank level who is the contact. If I click on personal fine, you're going to see the contacts at the bank level. So go there. Click on actions plus now. Fine. I will now say uh, the contact address now. Fine. T02 contact address. So in the address of the mind. So I will now say 10020 and then you have 10020. Click on search fine. The contact address I am creating it actually. Click on OK. Solve file fine. Click on OK now. Address is not coming. And then the person's name, I will now say T02 Bank Na Ananta. Fine. Ananta. So it's the bank level. Fine. Ananta 1. And then the last name is what? Lana 1. So the name is now created, then the phone numbers I will not add. Thank you, plus one. So, purpose is what work the code is 91. The phone number is what 9841867924. My number, and then I will now add the email also. Thank you, plus one. So, purpose is work now. The email ID is what nana dot app 60 at the rate gmail.com. So I will now continue for half an hour till it gets cut actually. Right? The time of cutting, I will not stop it. So I have now given the name and then I have given the phone numbers, I have given the address of the contact uh, bank contact number. And everything is not done fine. So click on OK. So by which you are not complete. Bank contact is not complete. So we are now given the address, contact fine, everything is now given fine. The thing, save and close by which we are now created the T02 HSBC bank. Save and close. We are now created the T02 HSBC bank. So that is now. So now we'll now go to the branches now. Right? The bank will be having multiple branches. We'll now go there. Click on the branch. Click on the branch. We'll now go on and get our branch. So go there. Manage bank branches. So go to the manage bank branches. <coughs> so click on plus now. So bank is T02. And then your tab, the bank will be coming. So the branch name, I will now say T02 New York branch. Branch is there. And then the routing number. Routing number is basically a what's called a nine-digit number. Fine. Nine digit number is the routing number actually. Fine. So 987, 987, 987. Fine. You give a different number number. And then uh, we have uh, what happens, all these things are not immediately required. Branch and branch type is what I will now say. Uh, Chips is the one you had to choose now. Fine for uh, this thing. Now, fine, they say that you use the chips actually. Chips is the one over there, and then RFC identifier. I'll well, leave it as well. if you don't know anything, I'll leave it. So, the branch also has to have an address in the contact. Now, click on it. Now, click on the address. So, click on plus now. Fine. The branch will be having an address now. So, I'm going to say T02 in branch in branch address. So, branch address will be fine. Right? So put the pin code now. One zero zero two zero. One zero zero two zero the one. One zero zero two zero. So click on search now. Fine. You're searching for it. 
nothing is going to come <coughs> so the address of the branch is not unpack with the contact number expand it contact 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 for the address so bank has got a contact so here i will not say uh, t02 find branch find i will not say ananta2 so different person name, purpose is what work and then 91 the phone number 9828678 so address the contacts address fine branch address is now given of fine contact address fine contact address to click on it so and then make a search on this one. So, what does the Nogi one find for that? So, you will not give a plus on the name, give an email ID on it. Work now find for that. It is kasupanam under it gmail.com. I mean, Tamilians can understand this, others cannot understand what exactly it is. So, kasupanam at gmail.com find for that. I have not given it, find for that. Okay. <coughs> That is my email address. So you know, given everything, fine. the branch is now created, address and contact separate is not. Save and close by which what happens? The contact is now created. Branch number type. Chips code, I will not write nothing. Bank branch type. Chips. Okay, this much I know now. Fine. Uh, is now routing number is a question. 987, 987, 987. Okay, let's save now. Fine. Enter a valid in the field routing number uh, of at most the following number of characters, nine characters now. Routing number. Yeah, what is it here? Routing number. At most the following number of characters. Ha! Huh. Well, it is not accepting it. Routing number is not accepting it. Anybody have idea on the routing number? I have only written a routing number as a nine digit number. So I will not say uh, 432, 432, 433. Then try to save it now. The routing number field is invalid. Come on, yeah. It has to start with 9 or what? 9876523423. Ah, ha, ha. Enter a correct value for the routing number. I will now identify the routing number. Now, right? Or no, you the routing number. I'll just busy band. Say ah, the number is there. Fine, they now put this number. Take copy it. No go there. Click on it. Ah, what is this? Here, here, no. here. Where we are? Manage banks. So I will now put this number over here. Let's see whether it saves something. Ah, it has saved it. My new changes are safe. Right? <laughs> so go on and try to find out the routing number of something, and then it will not be saving. Don't tell anybody. So save and close. By which what the branch is now complete. Save it. So branch is now created. Now we will now have go on and create our account. Now. Go to the manage bank account. Now click on that. Create our bank account. So paste it. Manage bank accounts. So go to the manage bank accounts. <coughs> It is validating the routing number, see, that way it's working, because it's not a realistic situation as far as money is concerned. So, manage bank accounts, I'm going to make that. So, we'll now go on and create our bank account. Right? Branch is what, T02, I'm going to do it, I have no point, bank branch is coming. The account name, <clears throat> I will now put, Nana Consultants. Go there, account number again. Right? Nine eight seven nine eight seven nine eight seven. See where it has gone. Close dollar bank account. I'm creating legal entity name T zero two. And then you type. I'm putting the legal entity over now. So legal entity is coming. Account type is what checking. Checking is basically a current account now. Checking account is a current account. Other and savings. Mean checking is a current account. I bond number. Oh, that is also a very important one. I have not any I bond number. I have written it or not? I bond. I have not written it. I bond number is also important. One. I bond <coughs> HSBC Bank. So I bond HSBC Bank. I want to have this Right click, then open a new tab. 
I'll pick up the IBON number for this now. <clears throat> Calculate IBON. Come on, yes. It should have given this one. IBON process busy. <clears throat> Sort code, all these things, you're going to calculate the IBON. Ah, there is one IBON in print format. No, fine, no, 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 no. Uh, bank account number so and so so and so IBON in print format you don't take it up then paste it over go there go to the manager I will not paste the IBON number check digit I don't know what exactly how much give it now so enable it for what receivables no fine not the payables so one bank account can be used for receivables and payables this is our bank account fine it is an implementing company that is a reliance industries we are implementing it reliance industries bank account so payables also we can implement it and then payroll is for HR or something. So you're not given it. So at this stage, what happens? We have to go and add the security number. Business unit access. If you go try to save it, it will not throw an error now. The business unit access is not there. The IBON entry is invalid. God. IBON fields are numbers 0 to 9, uppercase, and then no spaces. Space is not required. Click on it. It will not remove the spaces. Over here. Remove it. Click on save now. Okay? I now removed all the spaces now. It's changed to not be there. So click on save now. Go, go, go. The IBON field is in that enter a correct value of the IBON field now. What, what is this here? This is not the IBON field actually. <clears throat> I have one IBON field. Once again, I have no written in one place. I have written the IBON field now. I will now go to the fusion. Uh, uh, once again, I have, have a IBON. <clears throat> Uh, I will now go to the OU procurement and then here I will now go to the what's called uh, your uh, uh, inventory documentation, order management training, fusion procurement documentation. Uh, we have, yeah, inventory procurement worksheet. I have an IBON now. Go oh, click on it. I have written some IBON. Okay, control H and then IBON. I will now call it I E A N. I have written IBON somewhere. Now. Fine, next now. Fine, oh, we have an IBON. Where is it here? Enter IBON. Okay, we have an IBON. So, in the inventory procurement worksheet on the 313th field, we have IBON number. No, right? no, not. We will not take a copy of it. Take it. It's a valid number. I know that because we have done it. So, go there. Go to this place. I will not put this IBON number. So, click on save now. Fine. Come on, come on. Save, save, save. It is validating these things now. Fine. You must grant at least one business unit. Fine. IBON is okay now. IBON is okay now. The business unit access is a problem. Fine. Good, good, good. Fine. At least I have. So, remember. In this inventory fusion inventory procurement worksheet at the 313 line, my 313 entry, I have the IBON number because it was tested in something. Fine. When I was doing this on now, I have tested it for the supplier qualification module. I have tested it with this IBON now. 313. So that's the one. You take a copy and then you do it now on the fusion inventory procurement worksheet. So now business access is not there. Fine. The business unit access is required. Now you know, go there. Click on plus now and give the business unit access. When it comes to 30 minutes, it will not say, come on, come on, I will not stop it at the end. So business unit access, I will not go there, T02, the one point with the two So now, if you're going to create a payment document for this, you have to do this now, fine. Payment document categories, only for payables actually. Receivables, it is not required at all. We are now working on the receivables and so it is not required. So when you're doing the payables, we have to have the create the payment document category for this account number actually, remember. So go there, click on okay, fine. The business unit is now okay, click on okay. Go there. So give a save at this stage. We'll not see whether it is saving or not. Fine. Go there. <coughs> jolly jolly. We have saved it now. Right? So there is the IBON number. And then the business unit account. Number. You go to the general law fine. The general, you go there. So everything is accounting is coming. So there is one cash account, cash clearing account is there. So the system has automatically loaded. Payables document is not there. Fine. Doesn't matter. Go to the controls now. Fine. Controls, you know, see anything is there. I don't know much about it. Fine. You have to learn all these things from AR team only. Fine. I'm now only doing a skeleton setup of AR actually. So go there. I don't know much about it. So go to the security. We'll see if there is a security. We have to add the common set of So go to the users and roles. Fine. on actions. And then oh, you cannot do anything at all. Okay. Leave it as this much is sufficient. Fine. So my bank account is ready. What is my bank account number? My Nana consultant. The name. No. My account number is nine eight seven nine eight seven nine eight seven. Okay. Fine. Save and close. So the bank account, bank branch, and then account numbers are created. All created everything. I'm ready. I close this one. Let it come to us. So bank is created, bank branch is created, bank account is created. Manage receivables activity. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll now go to the manage receivables activity. So click on the now. Manage receivables activity. So go there. So paste it. Okay, now manage receivables activities. 
ಪಿಕ್ ಮಾಡಿ ನಾನು ರೀಸನೇಬಲ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಯೂನಿಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟಿ ಜೀರೋ ಟು ಅಂಡ್ ನನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಅ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಒನ್ ಯರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ಅದನ್ನ ನಾನ್ ಯರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಇದೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಅನ್ಯರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಅವೈಲಬಲ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನುವಲಿ ದ ಎ ಆರ್ ಟೀಮ್ ಟೋಲ್ ಮಿ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇಟ್ ನೋ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ರಾಪಿಡ್ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ದ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಯರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಅನ್ಯರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಅದನ್ನ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ನೋ ಫಾರ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡೂ ದ ಅಕೌಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಎ ಆರ್ ಅಕೌಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಯರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ಆನ್ ಅನ್ಯರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ದೇ ಟೋಲ್ ಮಿ ಸೊ ಐ ಡೋಟ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ಟೋಲ್ ಮಿ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಸ್ ಬಿ ಯು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಅ ಚೆಕ್ ಇನ್ ದ ರಿಸಿಬಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಯರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ಆನ್ ಅನ್ಯರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೌಂಟ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಆನ್ ಸೊ ಗಿವ್ ಎ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ಸಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ದೇರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ಸಲ್ ಸೊ ದ ಎಂಟ್ರಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ದೇರ್ ನೌ ವಾಟ್ ಅಮನ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ ರಿಸಿಪ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ಸ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ ರಿಸಿಪ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಅಲ್ಲ ಹೌ ಟು ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ ರಿಸಿಪ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ಸ್ So, what is the manager reserve classes and methods? I don't want it. I don't have it. So, manager reserve classes and methods. So, uh, I have to, what happens, I create it now. I click on plus or nobody created it. So, the customer may give you cash now. Dead view row of a persistent ID to go. Tell that is coming. I'm going to create reserve class and methods. I'm going to give a cancel now. You know what I'm going to do. So, to give us no i only have to create it i have to create it create it manage reserve class and methods for it so go there i will not say t02 so the name should be what cleared reserve class they gave us a clear reserve class so the customer is giving you a payment in cash or otherwise he is giving you a check and then you are depositing in the bank and then you are not making any entry in the oracle systems at all you are not making entry so those things will be considered as a cleared reserve either a cash deposit or you are realizing is let us say you know making a pay via google pay or something like that no fine and then you are depositing it in your bank basically so no transactional things are done fine one is a clear receipt one is a confirmed receipt remember for a confirmed receipt every entry has to come into the oracle system no fine that will be that art will not issue so we are not going to go for the clear receipt no fine clear receipt is what uh, you are simply entering what he has given no fine no remittance uh, clearance direct fine or is a no remittance no fine clearance uh, clearance method is direct okay fine the creation method is also manual these are what happens there are so many things that is a manual one so manual no remittance and direct yes. clear is a class no remittance clearance and then the remittance bank account is to be so click on fine no go that thing on plus one fine we have to give the remittance bank account click on plus one fine there you going to remit it no plus one fine is is basically cleared the click on name now In the name what happens i will not say uh, t02 fine i will not say the same thing i normally the class name itself will be put on the name also we have not fine the printer name leave it no fine uh, it is not coming automatically it will be as it so we are not given this no fine calls right remittance bank accounts we had that right receipt method is what the same method we are adding now fine click on the bank in the remittance bank account click on plus no fine you know what add it so click on plus you know add it go there so the business unit is t02 and what have no the bank will be on your brain so go there click on it the bank is t02 the branch is also t02 everything is coming account number is what uh, i think it is nana consultants or account number no nana consultants is coming along with account is there so here the unearned and earned are required fine if you have not done it on this slip fine manage receivables activities you have not created the earned and unearned you cannot do it on the receipt class at all fine. so since we are on the rapid implementation is ultimately created and go there and then put it down as place you know earned discount fine drop it down the earned discount and then these are unearned discount i am not going to the unearned discount fine go there and then so these two things are required there is a mandatory ones for this so unapply the accounts and all it is getting automatically populated because of their rapid implementation otherwise we have to create everything manually so minimum reserve on clearing days fine all these things you know giving it fine nothing all that's okay this much is sufficient on that click on save and close all. so the setups of ar is now complete as far as the receipt is concerned now so we are now create a clear receipt one is a confirmed receipt and then one is a clear receipt you can save and close next is what we are now going to create as so there is a transactional part now. so we will now break and then come back and then you know complete the receivable setups now fine we know perform the transaction of what up creating and applying a receipt actually
So click on stop. So we are now beginning AR transactions actually. Thank you, Professor. So let us now log in into my now bank. So the P01, it's a T02. Let us go to AP1 time. So we come over here now. So now I will now perform the AR transactions. So having done this now, find that. So receipt class and methods is now completed. Find that. So we are now going to create receipt. We are going to create receipt. We have one debit when normal invoice for ninety dollars and then one debit on credit memo for nine dollars. Now, fine. So ninety minus nine eighty one is the total amount which we owe to the customers. Now, or the customer owes to us. Customer owes to us. So I will now go to the AR receivables and then here. I will now go to what accounts receivables and then create receipt. Receivables, account receivables and then create receipt. Accounts receivables. We go to the accounts receivables and then I will make creating a receipt. We are going to perform the transaction. The setups in AR are complete now. We are now going to create what this thing. So click on the task list on this now. Fine. Click on the create receipt in the top. Click on the create receipt. I am now going to create receipt. <clears throat> so is the receipt type is standard? Fine. Business unit. Drop it down T zero two and then give it as now. So receipt method will be coming automatically. So do that. We have a clear receipt method which is now created. Now, right? So confirmed receipts is the one where we are going to enter all his uh, information into the system. Now, right? now it is a clear receipt. Right? I will now say receipt number is what five thousand one. What is receipt number? So enter amount is what eighty one dollars. Ninety minus one is eighty one dollars. Right? Visible specials, I don't know what to enter all this number. So we have the name, branch, and then account number coming up automatically. Otherwise, you have to choose it. Right? So it is our branch. Right? That is a, it is Reliance Industries is implementing it. So Reliance Industries account number. Right? I have now put my own. Fine, doesn't matter. Right? It is the Reliance Industries account. Right? Where you are now going to do it now. So the customer Air India has given a check, and then we have encashed it, and then we are now depositing it in our account. Fine, you got us. You got that. You got that. So customer name, if you want, you can give the customer's bank account also. All these things, they're not a mandatory one. So now for this receipt of five thousand one, I am now going to what find out the remittance referral detail now. So add the open receivables. If you click on the add open receivables, it will automatically show you which are all the receivables which are not applied upon. We have one invoice and then one credit memo which are not applied. I'm going to go to the add open receivables. Click on the add open receivables. And then here we will now query on the customer name. So go there, click on the customer name, transaction customer name, and T zero two. And what happened? So on the customer name, I'm going to query. So click on it. T zero two. Click on search now. <clears throat> so it's a T zero two cust one. So we are going to make a search on the customer name. So normally, what happens? Only the invoices will be coming. So go there, select it, and then click on OK. And then we will now include the credit memo also. When you make a search, we are going to include the credit memo also. So query on the customer, and then include the credit memo also. So the one thing that. So include credit memos also in the search now. Right? It will not show you all the invoices and credit memos of this particular customer. So there are multiple fields on which we can make a query for what happens identifying the open receivables actually. So these are all not yet applied actually, and they are all open. So click on search now. Fine. Include credit memos and then the customer name. Fine. Invoice and credit memo. Both of them will be coming together on the bottom. So both of them are coming. How to add both here? I will now select fine. with the control. I will now select it and then select it also. Fine. With the control, I am selecting both the lines. Fine. One is 890 and 85. Fine. Click on add now. So click on add. It has to get added at the bottom. So click on done. Go down. You can now see. See both the things are done. So 90 and minus 9 both. Are so the open receivables have been added to the receipt now. Fine, five thousand receipt has been added now, and that's it. Fine, go there, come on. So go there, you know that. Now what you have to do is submit and then create another. You should not do it. Now. That is what my AR team told now. You should submit it only for a confirmed receipt now. Fine, it is a cleared receipt. For a cleared receipt, you are not supposed to submit it now. Fine, you have to do it only manually. That is what they told me. Fine, AR team. So do not do for a cleared receipt. Only if it is a confirmed receipt where each and every Activity of the customers. Customers might have given a check. You will now register the check, and then you will now deposit it. And then you will now through the cash management, you will now do the perform the reconciliation, everything. So if you are doing it, then only you can submit it. If you are doing a clear receipt, what happens? You drop down, and then they ask me to do it manually now. Submit and apply manually, and not submit and create another. Right? You should not do the submit at all. Right? Submit and apply manually. Remember, otherwise it will not work at all. Right? 
submit drop down on this submit and apply it manually talk to the air team they will not teach you a lot on this one. they have been asked to submit it manually 5001 is the receipt number one so it is now getting applied fine both my invoice and then the credit memo are now getting applied upon this one. your remittance bank has to come otherwise you have to choose now fine if it is not coming this area you have to choose it now it is not done fine that so you edit receipt number 5001 fine that is what is so total amount is now due is 81 now. so the receipt is now created we are now creating the receipt now. So click on save and close now. Fine. The receipt is now created. The customer side, all these things are coming. Fine. The total entered amount is 4581. Fine. Both the things are applied actually. <coughs> so clear receipts. Fine. Go that. Receipt details is now coming. Fine. Go that. Receipt details $81. Fine. Go that. So view remittance reference details. Fine. Go that. I will now see this. Fine. Go that. Add open the receipts. And view re remittance reference detail. Fine. Click on the view remittance reference detail. You now have all the right. So click on the view. So it is now showing you this one. Fine. This has been done. So no need to add anything at all. And open receivables already added. This is fine. So click on save and close by which it is not done. Huh? Okay. It is not done. So receipt is applied. Fine. Now we have to do the create accounting in account receivables. Now after having done this, what happens? We have to go on the create accounting. Fine. Click on it. We will not go there. Click on it. We will not perform the create accounting. Fine. The accounting, there is a create accounting. Fine. Click on the create accounting. We will not create accounting. Fine. Receipt is applied for both the open receivables now. Fine. It is no more open now. Fine. So print format is okay, fine. Ledger is not uh, just coming automatically. Fine, that not. Credit accounting is just no fine. Accounting is final. And then this is going to be detailed now. Fine. Go there. <coughs> Go there. So transfer to GL. Everything is now post to GL. Everything is now anyway. That's it. Okay. So click on submit. So we are now creating accounting and receivables. Fine. Credit account, receivables accounting. Fine. Click on submit. It has to be pushed to the costing also. Remember, we have to push it to costing for uh, what happens uh, doing the financial transaction. I don't know how to do that. Fine. That I don't know. So I will now go to the right and then duplicate it now. Click on duplicate. So we are now creating accounting for this one. So we'll now go to the tools and then have a look at the schedule to process. So click on the schedule process. We are now having a look at it. So go there. Great receivables accounting is now passed. So once we're running fine, accounting is passed. So recognize revenue. Then revenue recognition is not taking place. Now, fine. So we are now recognizing that $81. Revenue RR is a very big program basically in receivables. We have to recognize the revenue first of all. So this says what whatever he has given to be in a cash form or whatever it is, we have recognized it. It has now succeeded. Then revenue contingencies will be running. So then finally the execution report will be running. Yes, sir, one doubt, sir. Tell me. Actually, uh, so from inventory, uh, we didn't uh, transfer the transactions to costing, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I, we are not done that. From inventory, we are, we are done, not. Done. Whatever we have received, uh, whatever we have shipped, and then whatever we have received as RMA, we are not transferred to costing at all. Right? That has to be done for the costing purposes. Yeah, uh, so then only this COGS will be uh, reflected. Right? So like COGS, COGS, uh, COGS is uh, basically based upon the cost of uh, goods sold. It has to come now. Right? Yeah. Yeah, of course, it should have been done now. Right? It should have been done. Yeah. Okay, okay, yes. Yeah. COGS account recognition will be done only after we pass on the inventory. You attended the procurement also, is it right? No, sir. You are not attending the procurement. Oh, God, you missed it. Fine. Watch the records now. Fine. I, there, I have explained I everything, everything on the costing part now. Fine. You are very correct now. Fine. So, first, yeah. we have to uh, cost the product. Then, only costs will be hit, actually. Yeah. Very correct. Yeah. Yeah. And that two costs will be hitting only when you transfer the receivables transaction to costing, which I don't know. Again, talk to the financial yeah. team. Fine. The payables costing, I know how to, how to push it into the uh, receipt accounting that I have explained fully in this one. Fine. And then I have attached yeah. my previous uh, session's record because this session record the, in the classroom, what happens, it was not coming properly. Uh -huh. But uh, I have attached the previous session record also. Do you watch that? That will be very clear for you. Okay. Yeah. So create a but content. But in, sub -process but in this case, like uh, hmm. if we can do recon, right? Like because we are doing uh, directly without uh, transferring immediate transactions to uh, costing and then we are doing here receipts, right? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how it will all become, right? But uh, I have not transferred anything from receiving to costing at all, right? Yeah, so yeah. only when you are transferring it at the time, only the COGS recognition has to come into the channel. Thanks. Thanks. Good, good, sir. And fine, Saran is having excellent knowledge. Please announce you as your, as your friend now. You will be of a great help. Naina is saying, Don't come near me. I am very, very busy. Up to two o'clock, I am now struggling on the system. Not having time to even sleep now. I'll have Richard to seven. Sorry, You give it to Saran. When Umzover is coming, contact Saran. That's it. So the journal childs are getting imported now. 
importing journal which are, journal sales are getting important so post journals after the import is coming then what happens the posting is now taking place now now the final activity in the ar is what create a trial balance so we had created trial balance and then see this so we applied the open receivables in a receipt of 5001 and then afterwards we create the accounting so then we are now going to what create a trial balance also post journals for single ledger now the create accounting execution report has to run so post journals for single ledger now the create accounting execution report is running so if you have a look at it what happens you know see the eighty dollars ninety dollars plus minus nine dollars will be coming out here So it is not succeeded from that point. We will not have a look at the report. We can create a cooling execution report. We will have a look at it. Click on it. And then the output we are now republishing it and republish the output. Sir, you discussed with the uh, AR team also on the COGS recognition, what are the things, and then if you know, you please uh, post it on the WhatsApp group yeah. so that whatever they will sure. be knowing it also, the COGS recognition. Sure. So yeah, accounting sure. method is final. So you can see what happens, the number of transactions, number of events processed, and nothing has failed. Right. Right. Nothing is in error actually. Everything is not there. So it knows the accounts are automatically populated by your rapid implementation. Revenue to receivables is the ultimate one. So that is not coming over there. Revenue to receivables. So the customer name is so and so. So here also, what happens? The customer name is not showing us so and so, so and so. This is for the ninety dollars, and then this is for the nine dollars. This is for the credit memo actually, revenue to revenue. So nine is hitting on the debit side uh, for the what's called your uh, credit memo, and then for this one, ninety is now hitting on the credit side. This is an opposite direction. So in the receivables is not coming. So the un, 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 final one is eighty one. It is going to unapplied cash to cash. It is unapplied, and then from there, what happens? It now tallies both the things, and then give you the final cash account entry of eighty one. So there is one. The total journal entry is already fine. This is not created. So one is for the credit memo, one for the debit memo, and then one is the what's called uh, the unapplied cash to cash. Memo. So it gets now fine. So close it now fine. We'll now create the trial balance now fine. We'll now do the trial balance only once in a year actually. So go there. So go to the general ledger trial, trial balance report. So this is now done now fine. Now go there. Click on it. We'll now do the general ledger trial balance. So click on the shade in new process. And then the TB will begin. And remember, real uh, one cannot be done here. No. So, real balance, you cannot do it. No. We have to have some other utility. I forgot other. No. The AR team told me. From the Oracle system, we cannot create the what I must say, real balance. Basically. And profit and loss, and uh, what I must say, balance sheet cannot be created from Oracle actually. You need to have Hyperion, I think. You need to have a Hyperion through which one you can do it. No. Through Hyperion only, we can now do the profit and loss and balance sheet. Only up to TB, the trial balance, you can do it now. Remember. In the Oracle system, we can know only a trial balance. So choose the ledger, no fine. Get access to the ledger is coming from the from period. We can even do it for a period basis. Normally, it will be done for one month, no fine. So I will not say uh, this is October, no fine. October 21. Uh, to October 21. <coughs> only one month I'm doing. So account level is what? I don't know what is this account level. Come on. I will leave it blank. So okay, fine. Okay. Account class. And account delimiter from there is a hyphen or I will say hyphen of account delimiter. Zero beginning of a year balance of another account. I will not say year beginning balance of another account. I will not put anything at all. I don't know what exactly it is. No risk. Trial balance is a detail, is not detail. I am not going for a detail. So click on it. So I am not going to what happens uh, uh, do the trial balance. So click on submit now by which the trial balance is now getting clear. You will be running it only once in a year actually. And then, or otherwise, on a period basis, sorry, I'm sorry. Every month, you will not run a trial balance and then you will not make a check whether everything is okay or not. Right? Otherwise, uh, we will now do all the corrections on the subsystems like inventory, purchasing and all. And then, we will again push everything into costing and then finally create again a trial balance. So, only when you are happy with the trial balance, they will not go for a, what happens, a full balance in the IPDN system. 
one hyperion system and then there is one more thing smart view or something like that they used to say there are so many ways by which whatever they will not do the actual balances only tb can be created on your other oracle system side so gender related time and balance is not run fine succeeded thank you monitor we know how look at it but how the trial balance is going to look like take on recombination click on it export to pdf <coughs> So click on show. Over there. And then it will tell you account wise, whichever account has been hit, what happens the year beginning balances, net balances, period balances, and then the period activity fine. We are not doing it for October 71. October 1. So it is not showing you on this account. This is a cash account actually. Fine. 1101 is a cash account. So $81 is now there. And then account wise, it will not show you. So it is basically a cash account. And then this is basically accounts receivables. Point is 90 and so receivables is 90 and then afterwards what happens unapplied cash is 81 now point. unapplied cash to cash it has already gone now so whatever accounts are involved it will not show you everything but the debit memo of nine where is it here here is it <coughs> so uh balance sheet department code hardware domestic obvious nine no shame or something that nine dollars of the uh, credit memo is now hitting this up so whichever accounts are involved in the total thing for the trial balance will be showing you for each and every account whatever is involved in your transactions so and then finally what happens the total for the company and then total for the report so 180 means what uh, it is a physical addition actually 90 plus something whatever has been transacted is a total uh, volume basically is a volume transaction that way it's coming so this is called a trial balance right is a trial balance for the particular period of october 21 that's what we had done so we talk about the seeing the October period, from period to two period. So for this, the real balance will So once when they are happy with this one, they will now create the actual balance. Find actual balance, the profit and loss, everything they will calculate. So that's it as far as AI is concerned. Now, uh, before I go to what I'm going to do to, uh, tonight now, tonight I'm going to do something now. Fine, that. I will not show you one thing on this now. Fine, that not. I will not show you one thing. About how to create a structure now. Right? Structure creation is not easily possible. We have to create a structure for our next exercise. I'll not go there. I'll not show you what exactly I'll create. So we go to this place. I will now go to the OU procurement. I will now go to the what's called fusion order management, fusion uh, order management training, <coughs> fusion order management documentation. So here I will now have an exercise on this one. Right? Configurator exercise. So in the configurator exercise, if you go there, fine. On our order management documentation, configure it exactly if you go on and see. So here we have to create a big structure like this one. Fine. We have to create one model in the top, and then we'll have one option, three, four option classes, and then you'll be having components, and then you'll not do it. So we are going to create a bill now. Fine. When you create a bill, you'll be having a parent as well as a component. Fine. I will be doing it, and then I'll not show you what exactly. This one I will not do it only tomorrow because I have to explain this now. Fine. It's a very complex part. So this I will do it tomorrow, but I will now create all these items today. Tonight I will be creating all the items. I will now create all the items for you today. But tomorrow I will now create the bill, the, this bill and then this bill I will not show you because I have to explain, teach you also and how to create a bill actually. But generic bill, when you want to create a bill, fine, a generic bill, I will let you. Fine. There is a, a small thing there on the generic bill. I will now go there and I will show you. So I will now go to the product management and then I will go to the product information management. <coughs> When you are going to create a bill, your bill will be having a parent as well as a component. I will not go there. I will not go to the browse items. Go to the <coughs> browse items. <coughs> and then go there. So here, I will not query for the T02. Uh, I will not have plenty of items. I am not going to save it now. I will not show you the error and then afterwards come out. So I will not say, take a serial, serial at inventory pick. So it is the must stop. So serial at inventory pick, I am not going to begin. Below which I will not put the serial at sales order issue. I will not say this is the parent and then the master. So here, if you go on then create a structure for this one. And click on the structure. If you go on and create it, I cannot create a structure at all. So go to the actions and then go to create. <coughs> go there. I will not make it as a primary. And go there. <coughs> primary. And then apply and add details i'm going to apply and add details it is not throwing an error now you do not have the required privileges now basically 
because of which you are unable to create a structure actually. So for a structure, one function security and data security are required. Then only what happens you can create it. You cancel the whole I will not show you about how to create the function security and data security. So I will not go to this place. I will not create a function security and data security. I will not create a function security and data security. Check on setup and maintenance. The configurator will be doing it on the fourth day, the final day, really. So click on it, now go there. You go to the search and then go to the manage item classes. Manage percentage, item percentage, class percentage. So manage item classes. So go to the manage item classes here. You go to the manage item classes. So what are the messages in the chat now? Okay, okay, fine. Uh, it's okay, then no, I can go on. So here you select it and then what happens? You edit it now. I click on edit. Root item class, I'm editing it. So go to the security. This security is required if you're going to create a bomb structure. Under the security, we had to add it. Click on, I have no idea. So click on plus one. I have no idea. So go there. I will know. We will add it for the master of it. It's called product data. Steve word. Product data Steve word is the name. So product data seaboard of Vora. If I choose the product data seaboard of Vora, if I click on it, and then I will now populate for both the master and child we added. T020. Then we have So we are doing it now. So I'm now adding it from there. So this is the one I have now added this product data seaboard in the security fine for that. So for the product data seaboard actions, I'm go to the actions and then go to select NAT. Click on select NAT. So I'm going to go to select NAT. <coughs> So here, click on search now. Blank search you make now. Fine. You make a blank search. It will not show you all these things now. Fine. You have to add everything. Fine. There are plenty of things are there. So we have to add everything. So what you do is, by the set of actions, there is a small square box. If you click on it, all the actions will be selected. So click on apply and then click on OK. Click on apply and then click on OK. So now we can very well create a structure on the master. The master we can very well create. So give a save and close at this stage now. Save and close. Similarly, you have to do it for the child also. You have to do a similar activity on the child also. <clears throat> on the child also, you have to do a similar activity. But I will now open it up and click on edit. Okay. I will do a similar activity on the child. Fine. Go to the security now. I will now do it for the child also. So click on plus now. Click on plus. And then go there. Name is product data skiver. And then give a tab now. And then the organization is what? I will not choose the ORA. The organization is the child org. The ORA. P021. And then give a tab now. And then go down. So here I will not go to the actions and then go to self NAT. So click on search, blank search, and go do it now. I will not select everything and then click on apply and then click on OK if I by which is not done. So the security, this is called function security and then this is called data security actually. Fine. These two things are required for creating a structure actually. Fine, see one close. This is a bomb structure. So go to the browse items now. So here, what happens? You go there now. If you go and then try to create it, it will become go to the structure and then go to actions and then go to create now. Fine. Now it will allow me. I will now make it as a primary. Fine. I will now again call it as a primary. <coughs> and then click on apply and add details, it will now accept. Because you have to now close it. Fine. I will have to cancel it and do it. Cancel it. Click on S1. It's already locked. Record is locked. It's not coming. Over. So click on search and now. And T02, I'm searching it. Now. Search. now I will now, after having searched it, I will now go on and create my item in the master. So uh, uh, pick inventory pick is there. I will now choose the master. Or, the master or I'm going to create. So go there, go to this place. I will now go to the structures now. Find structures and then let me create a structure. Actions and then create a structure. So the prerequisite for this is what? The uh, function security and data security. Primary. And then apply and add details. I think we have to log out and login. That is the reason it is not coming. Okay, so we have to apply log out and login. So any major changes, sometimes what happens, we will not need a log out and login. So click on it. So in the night, I am going to create so many items. I will now make a record also of whatever I am creating it now. And then I will now apply, I will now run the data collection at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. 
I will know. I will know going out now. I will know do it before ten o'clock. I will know make that record and then tell you. So let us please correct my information. Then uh, before ten o'clock, I will now upload a record of new item creations actually. And then watch it. And then if you can do, you can do it. Otherwise, what happens? Anyhow, that will be coming on the fourth day only. On the fourth day only, we are going to do it now. So you can even create those items now. Right? And then watch it. And then do it. Two zero two is the one. So click on search now. Right? I'm searching for it. Go there. I will now go to the inventory pick and put a comment. This time it has done something. So go to the structures now. Right? Click on structures. Then I go to actions. Then I go to create. <coughs> Make it as primary. So description is what primary, and then I click on apply and add details. It has to get added. So you have to log out and log in. Then what happens? We can now create a structure. It has come to the structure area. So in the night record, I will now show you how many structures I have created, and then I will also show you because how to create it, I have not explained you. Right? On the function security and data security part, you have to do it. Otherwise, you will not be able to create a structure at all. So this way, I do it. And then I will not tell you what are the things I am going to create now. I will not go to the configurator exercise. This one, what I was saying. I will be creating these items only. Fine. One model class, this option class, and then the finished good items I will be creating it now. I will not show it to you. And then uh, I will now, since I have already model option classes, this bill I will now create only before you. Tomorrow, before you, I will now create the bill. And all the four bills I will be creating it to you. And then one final bill over here. This I will be creating it before you for the configurator exercise actually. And we are going to see the configurator exercise. I do it. And the fourth day only we are going to do it now. Fine. Doesn't matter. So this one you can do it now. Fine. Flawless. And then afterwards, what I'm going to do is in this place. So I will be creating these items also. <coughs> along with one substitute item. Along with one substitute item. So uh, a dozen item also I'm going to test now. Fine. I'm going to create one dozen item also, substitute item also, and then these items I'll be creating. And then afterwards, I will be creating what uh, one kit I will be creating it now. Right? One laptop kit I will be creating it with a laptop as item, carry case as item, and then extended warranty. So these two are shippable, and then this is a billable item. I will not get a kit. So this one laptop kit, and then one laptop, one carry case as a shippable, and then one extended warranty as only a billable. Right? It is not a shippable. This I will not create. And then afterwards, what happens? I will be creating one more thing now. Right? On the what's called the PTO model. On the PTO model, pick pick model complete for simulating the ship set now. Right? I will now open up the video model. This also I will now create today. Now. So I will be creating three items for this now. Fine. One is the desktop monitor, and then one is the keyboard mouse, and then one is what uh, the uh, model itself. Fine. Mouse uh, uh, is a monitor. Monitor and finish good. Fine. I will now make a monitor with the finish good template, and then go there. Key mouse, and then I will now make what happens one model. Now. Model I will now create. Uh, afterwards, what happens? I will now do this thing. Now. So I will not create those items. I will be creating uh, the appropriate uh, keep sufficient quantity. Fine. I will not go to the hook step and then make a miscellaneous reason for this thing. Keyboard and desktop monitor is a keyboard mouse and then desktop monitor. Fine. I will not keep sufficient quantity over here now. <coughs> Sixth onwards, I will not do it tomorrow morning. So this many I am going to do tomorrow tonight. Fine. Before ten o'clock or eleven o'clock, whatever time permits, because I am not going out. And then once when I create all the items, I will now make one record and then uh, up, up, upload it to you. So those things also you have to create either today or tomorrow because it is going to be tested only day of tomorrow. Is it clear now? Any doubts? Yeah. So with this, we end today's session. Fine. We have now completed everything up to AR. Now. So tomorrow is going to be a tough one. Now. Fine. We are going to begin the shipping part. Now. The shipping part is very tough. And then the items we are creating, it will be testing it a day of tomorrow. So, uh, if you are able to see my record at 10 o'clock, and then uh, what happens if you do? Uh, I will not do one more thing. I will not, instead of 8 a.m., I will not do at 9 a.m. At 9 a.m., I will not run the collections. So, if you can even wake up tomorrow and then create all the items, <coughs> they will also be coming to you for testing, actually. <coughs> right? So, you can also parallel test along with me. Otherwise, you can test it any time. It doesn't matter that you have to immediately test. So, at 9 a.m. tomorrow, I will run the collections for all. <coughs> right? And then we will be testing it. And remember that uh, we have to populate the all type as a sales order for normal one and then a return order when you are creating a return order. Any doubts, you can call me directly and then I will not do it now. So that's it for the day now. Fine, I will not stop it. Any questions from you? <coughs> Good. There are no questions now. I will not go ahead. I will not stop it. Stop sharing. Let me stop the record. <coughs>